Hi guys and welcome to the second of two videos to discuss the web development assignment one. We're going to be carrying on looking at the principles of web design and we're going to be looking at the factors that can affect a website's performance. There are a number of issues or factors that can impact how a website will perform. This could be on a client side, which is a computer that's in your living room or your bedroom, or it could be the server side, which is where our websites and web pages will be stored. So let's first look at the server side factors that can impact our performance of our website. Firstly, we're gonna look at bandwidth availability. Bandwidth is the amount of data that we're allowed to transfer between our server and any of our clients contacting the server for our website. In some instances, when we place our websites onto these web servers, we pay a cost. This cost is dependent on the amount of bandwidth that we want to have available. And in turn, this means the amount of users that may be able to use or access our website. We're then gonna look at the number of hits. If you consider a website that's selling tickets for a very big band, and these tickets get released at a specific time. Four, three, two, one, it's live. Go, 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 go. <laughs> a web server may find that it's getting a lot of hits at any one time. Some web servers can't deal with this and may feel that they're under attack. This sort of attack would be known as a DDoS or distributed denial of service attack. So we need to make sure that any server we're going to be using is capable of dealing with any amount of hits if we're going to be expecting a lot of traffic coming to our website at a given time. Other factors on the server side that may affect our performance of our website could be the file types that we're going to be using. If you think of a image that you've created on your computer and look at the file size once you've saved it, you may notice that this file may be a number of megabytes. Now we need to be considerate of all of our users that are going to be accessing our website because you've got to remember not everybody may have a super fast internet connection like you do. Some people may have dial-up and others may have mobile phone connectivity, therefore reducing the amount of speed that they get. So this can be an issue when we're using images that are of a large file type. Now these factors aren't actually a major issue if we consider them and act accordingly when we are setting up our websites to go onto our web servers and also which web server to use. We're now gonna move on to the client side factors that can impact the performance of our website. As I mentioned before in the server side, we've got to consider the users that we've got. Not every user is gonna have a very fast internet connection speed. So their upload and download speeds may be a factor to the overall display and rendering of your website. And if your website has a number of images, the users may get a little bit upset and they may navigate away to somewhere else. The browser that your users are also using can impact the performance of your website. Old browsers may not necessarily support new features or new functions that you have tried to include or incorporate within your website. The processor speed that the client's machine has can impact the overall performance. Remember, when we load up our web browser, this is an application on our computer. And if our computer is unable to deal with loading up of the actual browser, our website may suffer in its performance. Consider the amount of interactivity that a web page may have. If there's lots of interactivity that might require your computer to do a lot, the performance of your website may suffer as a result if the computer is unable to cope and deal with the expectations of your site. We're now gonna look at browser compliance. Not all HTML elements and scripts are able to be run on specific browsers. Whilst we might try to appeal to all of our browsers, we might find that any website that's been created can be displayed in a slightly different way. When we look at some of the websites that have been created, we can see here from the Links Cars website that there's a lot going on. This isn't to say that this website is designed inappropriately and poorly. It suggests that the laws and principles that we are looking at suggest that this actual website is not designed using the Hicks law and the Occam's razor principles. Clearly, we can see that there's a lot going on on this website. This can be misleading to customers that find themselves on the website. It could confuse them to what the website's purpose is, and it might take them a lot longer to try and find the information that they need straight away. So this could be declared as having poor design for usability. Next, we're going to look at the Apple website. As you can see, the Apple website has used white space very effectively. Our focus is drawn to the middle where they're displaying one of their phones. Clearly, Apple's website has used Hicks Law's principle 
by not providing too much information to the users when they land on their page. The navigation appears to be consistent across the website, and the further that we scroll down we can see that the use of images and bold images allows our users to be drawn into their website quite nicely. We can see that they've used a series of fonts to promote elements on their website, but they've only used a couple of different fonts in this, so they're not overwhelming the users upon landing on the page.